In this video, we're going to talk about how to get to the full text of journal articles. As you search, you'll notice that there are lots of journal articles that the library has immediate full text access to. So you'll be able to click a button or a couple of buttons and you'll be able to open the full text to the article right there. There are some journals that the library does not subscribe to. So if you're not seeing the option for the full text, then it's possible that we don't have access to it. But we do have a service called Interlibrary Loan. So we can borrow journal articles for you from another library completely for free for you. Um, so don't ever worry that um, you're not going to be able to get something or um, you'll have to pay for an article because the library has a process in place for you to request those. It just takes a couple of days and it's usually pretty quick. So if you're searching in the library databases like CINAHL or Medline, then it's not too difficult to tell when we have access to something and when you might need to request it. So if you see something like this that says PDF full text, then usually you're going to be able to just click on it and the article will open right up. So you can read it right here. You can um, download a copy to save to your computer. You can um, upload it to your Google Drive. You can email it to yourself, however you like to store things. So if they have that PDF full text link, then it's pretty easy to get to the full text. Where it gets a little bit more complicated is if you see this green find full text button. So if you see this, it means we might have access to it, we might not have access to it. It just doesn't live inside one of the databases you're searching right now, like this one does. So if you click this green button, it will search all of the library's subscriptions to see if we can get you the full text from anywhere. And a lot of times when you click on that green button, you'll just be brought to a different page like this and you'll be able to download the full text of the article. So if you're brought to a different page, usually it will look like a publisher's website, then you'll be able to get right to the full text. Once in a while, you'll get dumped out to the journal homepage. So it might just say the American Journal of Medicine and you wouldn't see the article you're looking for. We try to avoid that whenever possible, but sometimes it's just not possible to bring you directly to the article, depending on how the journal website is set up. So if you get to a journal website, like the American Journal of Medicine, you'll just have to look for somewhere that says archives or previous issues or something like that. And then you can use the date and the issue number and the volume number to get to the actual article that you're looking for. That happens very rarely, but I just wanted to mention it in case it does come up. So just because you see this green find full text button doesn't mean that we don't have access to it. Sometimes you just have to click and you'll be brought right to the article. Let's see if we have access to this one. So sometimes when you click on that green find full text button, instead of being brought to the article or to the journal website, you'll see this access options page. So if you see this page, it means that the library doesn't have the subscription to this journal so we're not going to have access to the full text. It's always worth clicking this search Google Scholar just because sometimes it's available for free somewhere. Um, so it might be available um, in an open access repository. It might be available um, through the author's institutional repository, something like that. If you click that search Google Scholar, and you see a link over here that says PDF or HTML, something over to the right, then it means that the article is probably available for free somewhere. So you could just click on it and it would open right up. If you see this blank space here, it means that it probably is not available for free. So since the library doesn't subscribe to it and it's not available anywhere for free, that means you're not gonna be able to get to it right this second. But like I said, the library can borrow a copy for you. So if you have a couple of days to wait, you don't need something that you can work with right this second, then you can click on this request via interlibrary loan link and sign in with the same Simmons username and password that you use to get to the library resources. And then the very first time you do this, it might ask you to verify some information about yourself. 
if that happens and you get to this page and it's blank, just click out of it, go back and click on the request via interlibrary loan link again, and then you should see it pull all the information about the article for you. So if you're connecting through the databases, then it will pull the journal title, the volume and issue number, all of the information that our staff needs to be able to track down the right article for you. The only thing you have to fill out is this date not wanted after. So like I said, it usually does take a couple of days. Let's say that you are working on a paper that's due next week, and if you can't get it by this Friday, then it's not gonna be worth it for you. You'd rather just find something else. If that's the case, then you could put this Friday's date in and say, you know, if you can't get it by then, just cancel the request. If you'd be willing to accept it any time, and again, it usually only takes a couple of business days, then I would just suggest putting a date far in the future, like a year from today, something like that. And then you can click this submit request and you'll get an email to your Simmons email account with instructions for downloading the article when it's ready. So as long as you are able to wait a couple of days, if you find the perfect article, um, you're not gonna have to pay for it and uh, you will be able to get it to use in your assignments. Now let's say that you're not searching in the Simmons databases. Maybe you find an article on Google Scholar or um, cited in a different article and you wanna see if we have access to it. You can use the citation to find out if we do have access. So the easiest way is to copy the title of the article and go to the library website. And that's when this library search really comes in handy. So you can just search for the title of the article. And if it's something we have access to, it will probably come up in the first few results. If you're seeing lots of results come up that have similar words but are not the article you were looking for, then you can uncheck this Simmons Library Collection and it will search other articles that we don't have access to. So if you see it come up then, then we probably don't have access to it, but you can click that green find full text button just to be sure. You can check Google Scholar to see if it's available for free. And it looks like this one might be. Yep, it looks like we have the full text here. So even th though this wasn't an article that the library has full access to. Just by clicking that search Google Scholar link, we were able to get to it. If that wasn't the case and you couldn't get it through Google Scholar, then you could do that find full text button and then request it through interlibrary loan. And again, you'd get an email within a couple of days telling you how you can access the article. This can be tricky and sometimes the links will break or they won't be set up properly um, by the companies that we work with. So if you're ever confused and you're just trying to find the full text of an article and, and you can't find it, then you can always contact the library reference desk and we would be more than happy to walk you through it. You can also email me anytime and I'll get back to you as soon as I can.